Resurrection Sunday, y'all. <laughs> oh, man. I can't help myself, and I won't try. I'm excited. It is Resurrection Sunday that we are celebrating today. Oh, my goodness. It's a, it's a blessing to know who we know and for him to know us. Welcome, welcome, welcome today. I decided to go ahead and go this morning and uh, uh, go he- do it this way so that that we can uh, just be together for a few moments. I know things are happening in everybody's lives. Things are changing with the weather changing and spring coming and all. And uh, so forgive me if I missed any of you, but I am live. Give me some comments. I like that thumbs up already. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, and, and if you have a comment, just please just share with me. Just say something so I'll know who's watching. And uh, I only have, uh, I have a limited of time, simply a limited amount of time. Since we're going to be meeting live at Beams of Light Church this morning again, as we have been uh, on Sundays, so uh, we're we're together. To we're together again. We're together. Well, I probably ought to get in a, in a right tune, a right uh, uh, key. Let's see. We're together again, just praising the Lord. Are you praising the Lord today? We're together again. And the next ver- next line of that song says, "In one accord." I want to I want to go with you and you with me in the Word today. Because listen, hello, Sterella, good to see you. Happy Celebration Day, Shalom for all of you that are watching. The title I titled this says "Who." There it is on the bottom of your screen. Says "Who," and I I did that because I I was as I'm looking through the scriptures, as I'm looking through everything that transpired, you know. In fact, well, I've I've got it here. Let me see. I've got no. It's on not Acts. I want to go to Acts. Lord willing, we'll be going to Acts, um, the fourth chapter for sure. Uh, this this week's Bible study. Oh, and I want to tell you too, we have a special guest coming in. It, well, we have several special guests. It'll be the first time I think that since we've been going live in the live stream that I will have had I will have three guests on at the same time. It will be four of us and I don't know when it's scheduled, probably next week, because we're going to try to record. We have to record, pre record this one, uh, for various reasons I won't mention right now, but we're gonna have Philip Barnett, his wife Masha Barnett, and a special guest from Ukraine. Uh, her name is Nat- Natalia, and blah, the last name escaped me. I could read it, and you would not get it because I have no way of uh, understanding how p- to pronounce it. Philip's given it to me several times, and it's like, Phew, I don't get that. And so, anyway, she, Natalia, is the lady, the gal that is in charge of, she's kind of the point person, if you would. I've been doing this for many years, along with Philip's help and Philip's church that was in Ukraine, Christ Cathedral Church, and she is in the point position, the lead position for getting Jews back to Israel, getting Jews back to their homeland, getting them from places that they have to get out of to get in back to their homeland. Big deal. And she is going to be sharing some stories. So I am excited about that. So look forward to that announcement coming up. But I want to I want to start in John the 16th chapter. Uh, yeah, I've got it on the screen, John 5 and John 16. The very first verse in John 16 and the very last verse in that same chapter The first verse says, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Now, these are Christ's words, and he is giving the disciples a clue. Not only a clue, he's telling them right out what's going to happen. And then in the last verse, he says, verse 33 of John chapter 16, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I got to looking at all the things, and that's why I just put the says who. I get to looking at all the things that, that we have been told. 
we were we were told, and and of course this was prior to my birth and your birth, some two thousand years ago when Christ was on the earth, and thirty three and a half years or so after uh, his birth, he's been telling in that three plus years the disciples and everyone that he comes around, he's telling them about a kingdom that he's going to set up, and they misunderstood that. He also says that you destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it again. They misunderstood that. And he goes on and he talks about all of these things and everybody's missing it when it's coming from the very words of the creator of the universe, the God of all gods, the real God, the only God, who is the one that's saying what he's saying. And that's why I put on there, uh, says who, okay? Says who? Well, if you look in John, the fifth chapter, and also I have that on the screen. I don't have the verses up, but I, I just want to get, I just want to hit some highlights here because here's the thing. How many things, how many things has, has the Lord told us and we're still not believing? How many things has he, has he really revealed to you in your life and you're not believing either? Same for me. How many things, see, we're looking back, hindsight, 2020 vision, that's what we say, right? Well, it is. So we're looking backwards to an event, and by the way, I mean, Jesus rose again that third day, just like he said he would. Oh, man, I'll tell you, he rose again. I've been to Israel. I looked at the tomb where where Jesus laid, according to history and, and uh, all the archaeological facts and everything that bears it out, and our Savior lives. He no longer is in the grave. That's why he's the God of uh, and the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living, not of the dead. Those people are living, too. You and I are sitting here on um, a Resurrection Sunday. We have the stories, the events. In fact, how many of you have been watching any of the Chosen? I love, I love that series. And if you're watching it, I, oh man, what a what a blessing! I do want to, I do want to make mention, and this is not to uh, take away anything, but you you really need to know the word because there are times that things are taken out of context or at least out of the timetables. They're given great, great illustrations of what it might have been because a lot of our scripture don't doesn't say exactly the way a lot of things were in between. But I just want I just want to just give an easy, simple caution that don't take everything we see from Hollywood as Bible. We need to go back to the Bible and make sure uh, that's what it says. Now, is that is that a, a heaven and and uh, or a hell issue? Probably not. So that's why I'm not going to spend, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time here because that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing. You all know the Sadducees were the ones of the two religious sectors, sects, S E C T S. They were the ones that did not believe in the resurrection. That's why, and we say it, but that's why they were, they're so, they were so sad, you see. Okay, the sad you see. That's why they were so sad. You see, because they wouldn't believe in a resurrection. Where would you be today if you didn't believe in a resurrection of Jesus Christ? Where would you believe if you didn't believe that if there was no resurrection of Christ as the firstborn of many brethren? Then where where where, where does that leave you and I in regards to death? That's why that's why Jesus could say, "Look, behold," he said it to his mother. Behold, I make all things new. In the middle of the of of the, of going down the road with it with the with the cross on his back, uh, in the in the middle of of all of that, he's able to say. It's okay. It's going to be good because what I'm doing has to be done so that all of you can follow. So here we are today, some 2,000 plus years later, and we know the story of the resurrection. We celebrate it. We should celebrate it every Sunday. We should celebrate it every day, but we really put aside this day because historically this was the day, uh, at least on or about today, that, that he rose from the dead. But here's the part. Says who? That's the title. Says who? Well, Jesus is the one that said he would raise him from the dead. In fact, he's the one that said, 
there's nobody taking my body, nobody killing me. I'm laying down my life for you. Nobody killed Jesus without his, the Prince of Peace, by the way. Nobody killed him without his allowing it. He allowed it. He put himself on that cross. He put himself in that grave. And I'm all oh, praise the name of the Lord. I'm thankful that he was there just for a, a, a moment. And then he went and delivered the captives from Hades at that time, brought, took them back to heaven with him. And now you and I have a beautiful course ahead of us. That's why it's the best news ever. That's why it's the gospel. That's why we should be on, I mean, we call it cloud nine. We should be uh, ecstatic with today knowing that Jesus rose from the dead, no longer in a grave. In fact, I believe, we sing that song, once like a bird in prison I dwelt, okay, no freedom from, oh, we sing, he set me free. I can't help but think that Jesus might have sang that same song or a song similar to that because now all of a sudden he is no longer bound to this flesh and blood body. He's no longer bound to just a unit of one, if you would. He is no longer confined and restricted as a human in human form. When he rose from that dead, he took on his heavenly form, his divine form, and he went to the Father, he ascended to the Father, he came back, and then he ministered to Mary and to, the, to Peter and to John and, and to Thomas, and he, he ministered to all those people and all the other people on the road to Emmaus, he ministered to showing them who he was. And so we have these words that Jesus said, again, it's a passage you know, these things I have spoken unto you. But are we listening? Are we really believing what he said? There's a lot of things in the scripture that he, same source, the source, has said. But are we kind of like these guys were? It happened. Man, there's a good song. How many of you know that? It happened, like he said, as he cleansed the leper and he raised the dead. He fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread. You know that song? It'll happen, like he said. I had to look that up. It just, it just came to me. I, I think I'd, I'd sang it one time this week, too, and so there it is. It happened just like he said. And everything else in the future, my friend, will happen just like he said. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for being with me on this Resurrection Sunday. Listen, if you can get to church, get to church. Go to your church. Go support your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Bless him by coming and showing up and saying, oh, pastor, I want to, I want to, I want to stir you up. I want to stir up one another, encourage one another. That's what we're supposed to do when the body of Christ comes together, when we come together to fellowship. So here's the disciples. You've read about it. We've studied about it recently, how that they find themselves in church on Sundays, but they're in their home church. They got the door closed, and Jesus resurrects, and they don't stop Jesus from being there even behind closed doors. Jesus shows up and he ministers to them. Matter of fact, he eats with them. A little bit later on in the Gospels, we see where the guys are fishing and they, they caught no fish and there's Jesus on the, on the shore. And he's like, hey, have you caught anything? That's what he tells them to cast out on the other side. And they get all these fish and he's got fish already cooking on the shore. I don't know if you've ever done that, but man, it is good. Good stuff. So back to... A passage, I've got it there on the screen, John the fifth chapter. And again, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Uh, good to see you, brother Steve Farmer. Can't wait. Amen. I'm with you, brother. I don't know what you have to look forward to in this life. I don't know if it's a career, if it's a, you know, I, being retired. I... I <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's your first car. Maybe it's your first house. I, I don't know. But no matter what you have that you're looking forward to in this life, it is nothing without Jesus. It is absolutely nothing without a resurrected Savior. 
the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious people that knew the scriptures inside and out. In fact, that's what I want to get to in Acts, the fourth chapter. We won't have time today, but maybe Bible study this week. We get to the place where the Sanhedrin, all of those guys are questioning a, a couple of guys, commoners like you and me, uh, Peter and John, questioning those guys because they're preaching Jesus and the resurrection. They're quoting scripture. Yeah, because they've been with the author. <laughs> they've been with the source. They're not just spending their time and sitting there looking at their Bible and going, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure all this out. No, they spend time with the author. They spend time with the creator of the universe. He no longer lives in a, in a human body. Now, according to John, the 14th chapter, he says, Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one better for you. In fact, I'm going to send one just like me, the Holy Ghost, and he's going to live inside of you. You don't, you don't even have to wait to get to a synagogue, a temple, a brick-and-mortar building. He's going to be inside of you, and he will teach you all things <laughs> whatsoever I've commanded. I'm going to tell you, we're living in a wonderful time. This is a, we're living in the dispensation of grace. It's a dispensation where the Lord is drawing men to him. I pray this morning that if you don't know him, I'm not talking about knowing him like the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. They knew him according to the scripture. In fact, the law was God. <laughs> the law was God to them. Mm, not so much now. In the new covenant we're living, Jesus came to fulfill all of the foreshadowing and the, and the precursor of the Old Testament and the old law to a new way, a new living way, a new consecrated way. So today, man, it's a, it's a day of celebration. And we, as we look in, in the scripture, I put John the fifth chapter, and I, I just want to read a few verses here. And, and again, I'm a little pressed for time because I need to get to uh, my, uh, my fellow uh, brothers and sisters and, and spend some time with them on site. But listen to this. The fifth chapter of John, Jesus is talking about bearing witness because that was a big thing, should still be a big thing. If you have an eyewitness, it, that helps. And if you have a real reliable eyewitness, that even helps more. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, in this day and time when Jesus was ministering on this earth, they were constantly questioning, 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 because things weren't lined up according to their expectations. Things today in our world may not be lining up to your expectations about what God should be doing or what he hasn't done or why isn't he fixing this or why hasn't he fixed something else and well the prophets are saying this and the prophets are saying that but do you realize man, oh man I, I, I didn't uh, I don't know I, I, yes I can real quick do you realize that according to Isaiah the ninth chapter a prophet that was what six seven hundred years before Christ a prophet that prophesied about the birth of Jesus, and, and I, I turned in my Bible, again, forgive me for not putting it on the screen, but it just came up in my spirit, the ninth chapter of Isaiah, and, and, and here, here's, what it, here's what it says. The ninth chapter of Isaiah says, for unto us is a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, that sounds to me, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds to me like statements after the facts but it's actually before it happened. It'll happen, like he said. I'm getting back to that again, but I, oh. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
the mighty God. These are the songs that we sing at Christmas time. The everlasting, you, you all know that song, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, okay? Handel's Messiah uh, gives those same lines. And it goes on and he says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice, with henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. But that verse, for unto us a child is born. And then, some 2,000 years later, or around in uh, that proximity, a child is born, a son is given. What is God already said to us, church, what are, what are some of the things that he's already said? What is, the, what is the Matthew 16 chapter where Jesus is talking to the disciples and specifically to Peter, Simon, Barjona, asking, who do people say that I am? I'm getting to this says who, and then we'll close. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for, uh, thank you, Lord, for Resurrection Sunday that we have to celebrate. So, in that 16th chapter of, of Matthew, we're not. I, I, let me just summarize. You, if you know this passage, you know what I'm talking about. He says, "Who do people say that I am?" And Simon Barjona, Peter, Simon. <laughs> He says, thou art the Christ. After, after he goes through, you know, Elijah, blah, 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 etc. And that's when Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father. And upon that same, upon that same solid foundation, upon the rock, the rock that will become the chief cornerstone, and that's what they, that's what the guys begin to tell the Sadducees and the Pharisees over in Acts, the fourth chapter in the New Testament when Acts starts. But he says, he says this, Jesus is still talking to them, and he says, look, upon that foundation, upon that revelation, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build my church. It's something we forget. Matter of fact, Pastor Steve Farmer is the one that mentioned this to me. Hello, Bonnie Kick. Praise the Lord. It's finished once and for all, waiting to see him. Amen. Pastor Steve came by the church as we were mowing uh, yesterday, no, the day before. I don't know what day. doesn't matter. And he said something about us remembering who we are in Jesus, our identity. And that's another thing that he has said. Says who? Says Jesus. What does Jesus say? Jesus says to those disciples and to all of us that follow, he says, look, upon that revelation, we're walking this thing out by faith, not by sight. Miracles, in fact, miracles are, are for the people that don't believe. They're to get people to be convinced and to start believing. I shouldn't need another single mil a, a miracle today. I want to live, in fact, in the provisions of what God has already given me, knowing who I am and that I I have the keys. That's what he goes on in Matthew 16 to talk about after he says, all right, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father, and upon this rock, upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell, oh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, what is he saying? When you have gates up, typically gates are to let people in and let people out. When you have a set of gates at the entrance, you normally, I don't normally call them gates. I call them the gate or the gate. Well, I guess I do call them gates, the entrance. But I'm thinking there's probably more than one gates that we're talking about. And when we start building the church, that's not talking about brick and mortar buildings. It's not going to be talking about glass cathedrals. That's talking about you and me. And so as we begin to build the church based on what Jesus says, on what God has said through Jesus, Jesus said, I don't speak for myself. That's what he goes on and says here in the bearing the witness of Jesus. I started it, and I'll finish it in just a moment, but I want to keep on with this. I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. it when you say prevail, 
it sounds to me like that's a defensive position. Not offensive. It's a, it's a defensive. And so the reality is you and I, as the church, we should be continuing this thing on that Jesus has built, being the chief cornerstone whom the Pharisees, the religious people rejected, but now has become the chief corner. That's what he says in Acts 4. I really want to get there this morning. Don't have time, but we'll get there, Lord willing, in the Bible study this week. So let, let, me, let me finish this witness business because it's very important for us to understand. He says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let it be established, okay? And again, I'm reading in John 5. I already read John 16. If you missed the very first part of it, just, just jump back and, and then catch up with us later. He says, there's another that beareth witness of me, and I know that witness which he witnesses of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. Remember? John was the one that says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He was bearing witness of the truth. John had his own disciples. Man, I'm on a roll this morning. I feel like, uh, I, 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 feel like I could preach this morning because it's a Resurrection Sunday, and it's just, it's just easier because when we, oh, hallelujah, when we recognize who we are in Jesus Christ, he paid the price as you. He paid the price as me. He set the tone already. He took the sting out of death by doing it for us already. Therefore, we have no fear. We should not. We should not have a fear of death. All right. Uh, okay. Let me get back to this. He says, he said unto John, he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and shining night, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Yeah, I mean, everybody was like, man, you know, John the Baptist, even though he was a hairy beast and, and honeycomb, and, you know, he did the honeycomb hideout deal and all that stuff. Uh, he says, but verse 36, but I have greater witness than that of John. You think? Absolutely. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. So the works bear witness. That's one. Remember? Mouth of two or three witnesses, let it be established. So the works is one. He goes on. He says, And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Uh, that's two. <laughs> and Boy, you can't get any better than the Father himself, okay? And then he goes on and he says, Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and ye... Oh, by the way, I, I, I know I've said this before, nor seen his shape, which tells me that he definitely has some shape, okay? He, he definitely does. We are made in his image, in the image of him we are created. God bless you, Brother Kevin Wolf. Lord bless you and Beth and the chief of nutrition down there on uh, on Dewey. Love your drinks and love your love your spirit, brother. Thank you for being with me. I'm looking over here like you're at, the, at that computer. You're not. It's just <laughs> that's where my comments are. Okay, And he says, you have not his word. After he said, all of these things, I've got two. John the, John the Baptist, I've got the, the Father is bearing witness. So that should be enough. But here's another one. He says, and ye have not his word abiding in you. He's talking to the religious leaders. He's talking about the people that knew the word right and left. If you watched any of the chosen, you get a little bit of a, of a glimpse of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and their, and their stiff-necked... Uh, Oh, you stiff-necked people, you whited sepulchers. Uh, I, I can't, I, can, I just could go on and on about them. But boy, they know that they know the scriptures. And boy, you got to toe the line. And maybe you, grew, maybe you grew up in that kind of a atmosphere. Maybe you grew up in that kind of environment. I got to tell you, if that's the religion or if that's the environment that I have got to go to uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis and call it church, I ain't going. <laughs> I'm not going to a dead religion. I'm not even going for dead traditions. I'm going to seek one who is alive forevermore. I am going on a daily basis. When I gather with you here on, on this in this platform, I'm gathering with others that are like-minded, who have the living Christ, the Christ of the living God, alive and well within you and within me. 
What a blessing that is. And so here's the last one. I keep getting going on these, these ways, but I, I, let, me, let me focus here, and then we'll, we'll find a closing place, the Lord willing, this morning. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for joining me. So after he says, John the Baptist, that's a witness. My father, God himself, that's a witness. You couldn't, I mean, how much better can it be than that? But it does, it gets better. He says, you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. Here I am, Christ, right in front of you, and you're not believing. In fact, I was reading this week, and it's a little bit further on, and I think I was in John because I hang out more, mostly in John uh, on the Gospels. That's just a me deal. And so I, I'm going through there, and I, I'm reading where a devil, the devils recognize Jesus, and we know they do, but early on, they're one of the first ones. i got to go back and look at this again because I didn't realize that that so early on, one of those demons said, what have we to do with you? We know, I know who you are. You're the Holy One, the Son of God. He spells it out right there, right in, right in front of God and everybody. And then we have Jesus that is, is, is starting to perform his public miracles. And we know the one at Cana with the wedding that he was like to his mother, Mom, it, it's not my time yet. It, I'm not really, I, I don't want to do this yet. And, 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 and because of the need, I don't know, because of the situation, because mom was asking him, but he went ahead and performed that first miracle. And we see him performing other miracles. And, and, and those that he performed miracles, they're like, man, you know, what can we do? We want to follow you. And there was some times in there that Jesus said, no, in fact, don't even go and tell anybody. <laughs> don't even go and tell anybody what happened to you. We know they did, but he was trying to withstand the crowds until it was his time. And you want to know the truth of the matter? He did all of that, set it up. He set it up. He set his kingdom up. That's what he did. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right now. I've started this. But he set that up so that you and I can continue it. He set that up so when you read Acts, we'll be there hopefully this week in Acts, the fourth chapter in Bible study. When you read that, you see that the crowds, what, 5,000 people saved in Jerusalem? And we see Peter and John right having to go in front of the Sanhedrin and all those sad you see people. Jesus knew what he was doing, but here's, here's the point that I want to get to. Last one, verse 39, search the scriptures. After he says, you guys, you don't know his word. His word's not abiding, abiding in you. But you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. <laughs> you know the scriptures backward and forward. You, know, you can quote them. You can argue them. You can debate them. You don't know me. They testify of me. And there's that third testimony. Let it be in the mouth in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let it be established. So, my friend, today I want to encourage you to consider all that God has already told us. The gates of hell will not prevail against his church. We are probably ought to start acting like we know that scripture, believe that scripture, and know the author of that scripture so that we are not tuck and tail and running, so that we are not worried about those things that we often are worried about. Come on now, this good preaching, whether it's me or, 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 or anybody else. I'm preaching to us this morning. I'm preaching to a people that I know. You, you tuned in here because you are excited about Resurrection Sunday. You are excited about he's alive, he's alive, Oh, the grave couldn't hold him. Devil rejoiced for just barely a little bit of time till he realizes <laughs> he, he ain't there. 
He's not there. In fact, he, he just left his, his uh, clothes and, and, you know, that, that mummified stuff wrapped from bottom, top to bottom, and, and the napkin there folded it because he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back, and the next time he comes, comes back, he's not coming in the form of a prince of peace as he came then. He's not coming back as a, as a lamb being led to the slaughter. He's not coming riding a, a, a donkey, and he's not coming to people that are are waving palm branches and then it's going to be a short-lived celebration. This celebration today is a celebration that will last for all eternity. There's no turning back. There's no there's no rerun. There's no turnaround on this. A U-turn of any kind. I'm going to I'm telling you today that Jesus is alive. He is alive. It is well and thank you for that. It is finished. Yes, Torella, that is right. It is finished and we say when he said it is finished on the cross, that meant he brought reconciliation from a world of people that were living and born and living in sin to be reconciled back to the heavenly father. Not just for a heaven of eternity, but for heaven come down to earth living inside of you and me. He's alive, my friend. Is he alive in you? So what has he said that I'm, I'm going to pray a prayer here in just a moment in closing that the prayer is this. He will bring back to your memory his word, his scriptures, even miracles, even signs that have happened in your life to remind us that he is God, boy, there's another song. I know God is God, and he always will be God. He's God of the fiery furnace. I know I sing a lot. It just, it brings joy to my heart when I think of the songs that, that God inspired songs that, that authors have written. I, I haven't written songs, but I love to share the songs that others have written inspired by God. So wherever you are, wherever, you, wherever you're watching, if you're watching this live right now with me, thank you for those joining me live and for those who, who missed it. I know, I know, I know. You didn't give us enough time. You didn't do I I know. Please forgive me. I, I, I just felt like going alive live today <laughs> on this Resurrection Sunday. I don't know what you're going to be doing tonight, but if you watch me this evening, God bless you. When, if you. Whenever you watch and whenever you listen, I pray that the stirring of an almighty God would get a hold of you and not let you go. Put a smile on your face that will make you, as part of the body of Christ, glow. With everything that you touch, be blessed. With every person that you cross a path with, they'll know that you've been with Jesus. That's what the Sanhedrin, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and even the double whammy of high priests realized over in Acts, the fourth chapter, that Paul and John, these guys, they were teaching the resurrection, they were teaching the scriptures, and they weren't, uh, they weren't learned, they weren't, they weren't scholarly guys, they shouldn't know the scriptures like they know them. Can I tell you something? Today, I know his word better, whoo, better than I've ever known his word in my life. And it hasn't come from digging in his word to find knowledge and education and, and more details and this and that. It's simply come because I've committed myself to spending time with him. Not for a tick task of, I did that today and I spent my um, allotted time with the Lord today, but no, I spend it with him because, man, I love being with him. I love being with him better than anybody that exists. I love being with my Lord and in being with him and fellowshipping with him. He just opens up the scripture. So that's what I want to pray with you. 
Thank you for being with me on this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for sharing the word. Thank you for uh, coming back and being with us this week for Bible study. And then I really want you to look forward to uh, Natalia, our Ukrainian lady, and then also Philip Barnett, his wife, Masha Barnett, Maria Barnett, you'll see her on, online, because she's going to give some, uh, she's going to interpret online uh, in Russia, because what we're going to share is going to be shared uh, massively over in all of the, uh, the acquaintances that they have in Russia. And so I, I want you to look forward to that. But Today, celebrate the day. Celebrate the day because it's a day of life. There is no stopping us. There is no stopping the church. There is There are no gates that will prevail against his church, against his body. And one day, Brother Kevin's right, Kevin Wolf, one day he is coming. And what a glorious day for those who are looking with hope, that blessed hope for his appearing. So, Father, right now, God, I just bless all of our, I bless all of my brothers and sisters. I bless them, Lord. I bless them with your blessings. I speak, and I speak life to them, God. You gave us life. In fact, Jesus said that. That's another one of those says who. Here's who says who. Jesus. Jesus said the thief comes only to kill, steal, destroy, John 10, 10, but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And that more abundant life is what I pray for my brothers and sisters today. God, restore to them a passion, a drive. God, an accelerated life that says, I want to do all that I can for you, for your kingdom, in the blessed name of Jesus. Celebrate Easter today. Celebrate, I like to call it the Resurrection Sunday because that's what it is. The other words, they're okay. I don't have a problem with that. But listen, saints, it's Resurrection Sunday and Jesus, he is alive.